well, welcome everybody here in uh, also I almost said Tulsa, Oklahoma. We do have some people from Tulsa, <laughs> but this is Grapevine, Texas, and uh, welcome everyone who's with us online right now. And uh, we're going to be inducting a, an incredible woman into the International Christian Women's Hall of Fame, and this is the first one we've done here on these brand new facilities on Main Street in Grapevine, Texas. And uh, you are going to be incredibly blessed, stirred, inspired by the story of this person we're going to present today. I, I have just studying her life and going through her life. It's been a tremendous blessing. And so uh, let's have a prayer together. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for all of you that came right here. And uh, there will be some others th that said they were coming. That will probably you maybe see some people coming in and seat sitting around the table. Um, Let's just pray, ask God's blessing on this time together and on this stream as it goes out to wherever people may be listening. Hey, and if there are any, especially if any of our friends or anyone in India is watching this stream, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know that you are out there. And so we should have alerted somebody here to, uh, uh, to check the, um, the streaming. Hey, we got people in Ireland on, Sean and Margaret. God bless you, Sean and Margaret. So glad you're on with us today. I wish you were here to help. <laughs> Sean, uh, Sean and Margaret have been an incredible blessing uh, in our lives. And uh, so, Father, we thank you for this gathering today, for this induction, this first one here on Main Street in Grapevine, Texas. And we just pray that your Holy Spirit will work mightily and powerfully as we have gathered here today, may, we, may our lives all be changed, impacted by your Holy Spirit today. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, the Bible says in um, Hebrews, I believe it is chapter 6, verse 15, it's, it exhorts us to be followers of those who through faith and patience, that, that means perseverance, faith and perseverance, inherit the promises. In other words, we can derive encouragement from other people's lives who've already gone on. We can look at their lives and we can derive inspiration and encouragement. And that's what this International Christian Women's Hall of Fame is all about. It's to uh, write back into history powerful women of God that have been left out of modern history books. And this is one of them. And, uh, and you're going to see such incredible inspiration and encouragement from their lives. And so I'm going to just start going through these. Uh, uh, Sue added some slides here to this, and that's just sort of a, uh, a, I'm going to have to put mine on, Sue, on the beginning. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. And I'm going down. Uh, so we are presenting a woman named Pandita Ramabe, her years 1858-1921, and um, I think Sue is, you just carry on yeah, on yeah, I am, but I, I don't see the same picture on mine that I see on yours, so I was just wait on, waiting on you to catch up. Pandita Ramabi, here are some words that describe her. A Sanskrit scholar, now Sanskrit is the original language of India, and it is the language that all of their holy writings, their scriptures are written in Sanskrit. Now, very few people know Sanskrit. It's a very difficult language. So you would, you'd have difficult finding a modern Indian who knows Sanskrit, but, it's a, but anybody who knows Sanskrit is considered very special. Well, she was a Sanskrit scholar. She was a social reformer, a humanitarian, she is also a revivalist and a passionate follower of Jesus. Uh, I'm going to just say a few things about her and then get into her life. She was a social reformer advocating for the equal treatment of girls and women in India and those of lower caste. In addition to her many duties as director of Mukti Mission, she authored several books and also translated the Bible from the original Hebrew Old Testament in, and Greek New Testament into her mother tongue of Marathi. So you know she had a good mind on her. She was, not only did she know Sanskrit and her mother tongue of Marathi, but she was proficient in seven languages, including Hebrew and Greek. 
And sometime during her life, she translated the Old Testament Hebrew into her mother tongue and the New Testament Greek into her mother tongue. The well-known Indian author Vishal Mengawadi called her a builder of modern India and the Indian woman of the millennium. Now here's her story, her incredible story. She was born into an upper caste Hindu family on April 23rd, 1858, and her father was a devout preacher of Hinduism. And this is a picture I actually I found online when I was researching pictures of her. So as far as I know, this is a picture of her, her brother, and her mother and father, and she had one brother. So I'm, I'm quite confident this is a legitimate picture of her. So she would be the little girl there in the middle. Her father was a passionate devotee of Hinduism and a preacher of Hinduism, but there was an area where he was a reformer. He believed that women and girls should be taught Sanskrit so that they could read the holy scriptures of Hinduism in the original language. And this was not permitted in most of Hinduism, so he came under great persecution and was actually hauled before a, uh, uh, a court of Hindu scholars and, uh, and justices and, uh, and tried for teaching, Sanskrit to his, for, for teaching Sanskrit to his wife and daughter. He presented such a compelling argument that they let him go. So uh, he taught, her father taught her mother Sanskrit and then her mother taught it to her and found her to be an amazing learner. And then I have repeated here what I just said. Her father was persecuted for allowing his wife and daughter to learn Sanskrit, but he would not yield to the demands of his persecutors. Around the time she was born, her father fell on hard financial times, lost the family estate, lost everything, and was forced to become a religious pilgrim with his family just traveling from city to city. And here is something that she wrote. Actually, this is a picture from modern India of some people bathing in a sacred river. But Pandita wrote, ever since I remember anything, my father and mother were always traveling from one sacred place to another, bathing in the sacred river, visiting temples and reading Puranas. Puranas was another name for the sacred writings of the, of the Hebrews, and they were written in Sanskrit. So in their, just, their, their migrants traveling here and there, uh, they'd go to a city, he would position himself in a temple and he would start reading in Sanskrit, or he would go to find a public place where people gathered and he would start reading in Sanskrit. Nobody knew what he was saying or reading, but they believed that it would have some kind of special impact because they believed that these were sacred writings that he was reading. And so this is what she remembers of her life growing up, continually on the go, searching out these sacred places, bathing in the sacred rivers, visiting the temples, and her father reading these holy Hindu writings in public and living off of people's offerings. People would give them offerings and contributions that would help them to stay alive. During a terrible famine when she was 19, her mother and father died of starvation, leaving her and her brother on their own. They finally found, found their way to the other side of India. Now she was born and brought up on the western side of India, but Calcutta is on the other side. So, Finally, she and her brother somehow relocated to the city of Calcutta during this terrible time of famine in which they lost their parents. In Calcutta, she met Hindu priests and scholars who were amazed at her intellect and knowledge of Sanskrit, and they invited her to lecture. It's interesting, this is what they wanted her to lecture on, the duties of women. <laughs> So this resulted in her delving more deeply into the, the Hindu holy writings in the original languages in Sanskrit. And she gave lectures on this. And the Sanskrit scholars of Calcutta University was, were so impressed with her 
that they conferred on her the honorific titles of Pandita. Pandita was not her given name, birth name. It, this was a title that was given to her. Titles of Pandita and Saraswati, meaning learned master and master scholar. But as she delved more deeply into the sacred writings of Hinduism, she discovered that it was virtually impossible for a woman to ever achieve ultimate liberty known as moksha, also known as mukti. And of course, the Hindus believe in karma. Karma is sort of this, this mode of justice where you're rewarded for your deeds. Not in this life, has no bearing on this life, but on the next life. And so if your good deeds in this life have outweighed your bad deeds, you will come out, you will be reborn as something a little higher up. But if your bad deeds outweighed your good deeds, you would be reborn into a lower place. And finally, through maybe through millions of births and rebirths, you could eventually come to this place where you would be totally freed from this whole reincarnation and process of rebirth into this place of liberty that they call moksha. Also, they called it mukti. But she discovered that it was virtually impossible for a woman to ever achieve this in Hinduism. She wrote, this is what she wrote, women of high and low caste as a class were bad, very bad, worse than demons, and they could not obtain mashka, that is liberation, as men. She continued, the only hope of women getting this much desired liberation from karma and its countless millions of births and deaths and untold suffering was the worship of their husbands. The husband is said to be the woman's God. After the death of her brother in 1880, so she lost her parents at, 19, uh, at age 19, then her only brother, her only surviving family member, uh, I don't have a record of how, what he died of, but when she was 23, he died, leaving her completely alone. And maybe that was the reason she got married shortly after that to a Bengali lawyer named Bipin Bihari Medivi. And she immediately, she began to advocate, now she's still a Hindu at this time, she began to advocate for women in India, speaking against the practice of child marriage and speaking against Hindu traditions that confined and oppressed women. But her husband only lived around two years. During this time, she gave birth to a daughter whom she named Menorama. And then her, when her husband died in 1882, she took her small daughter and she moved to a place called Poon, and she founded what she called the Arya Women's Society, for the purpose of promoting women's rights in ed education and the abolition, the, the abolition of child marriages. So you can see she, ha she has a sort of a crusading spirit here uh, in her 20s as a Hindu. She wants to change. She, she, has a, she has a passion for justice and what is right. She also wrote a book entitled, and that book is still available today, she wrote a book entitled The High Caste Hindu Women in which she sought to expose the darkest aspects of the life of Hindu women and the oppression under which they lived. While in Calcutta, and this is where some things begin to move in a different direction, she had met Christians for the very first time and they gave her a Bible the first time she had ever seen or heard of a Bible. And she began to read it. And they also, they encouraged her because they saw such tremendous uh, gifts and abilities in her. They encouraged her to go to England to study. So she did. She went to England. And in 1883, while studying in England, she decided to become a Christian and was baptized in the Church of England. However, she later came to realize that she had merely changed religions, that she had not had a true born-again transforming change by the Spirit of God, that she had not really become a true follower of Christ. She had just changed religions. 
These are her own words. I came to know after eight years from the time of my baptism that I had found the Christian religion, but I had not found Christ. One thing I knew by this time, I needed Christ and not merely his religion. I wonder how many people in America have the Christian religion, but really Christ. have not had that transforming, life-changing experience of his presence and power, regeneration. So this is what she experienced. While reading the Gospel of John, she came to the sudden realization that Jesus was the answer for the women of India and the world. These are her own words. I had never read or heard anything like this. I realized after reading the fourth chapter of St. John's Gospel, by the way, that's the one where uh, Jesus encounters the woman at the well uh, who had had multiple husbands and, he, uh, and she gets so excited and she goes back and tells everybody about him and she was reading this fourth chapter of John. She says, I realized after reading the fourth chapter of St. John's Gospel that Christ was truly the divine Savior he claimed to be and no one but he could transform and uplift the downtrodden womanhood of India and of every land. That's a powerful statement, isn't it? Yeah, this is so powerful, we need to read that again. She said, I had never read or heard anything like this. Hey, folks, we need to get our Bibles out and read them again. It's nice to read all these books about the Bible. <laughs> we should read the Gospels again and again. This is what transformed her life, was reading the Gospels. She said, I had never read or heard anything like this. I realized after reading the fourth chapter of St. John's Gospel that Christ was truly the divine Savior he claimed to be, and no one but he could transform and uplift the downtrodden womanhood of India and of every land. Returning to India with a deep desire to help the destitute women and girls of her homeland she founded Mukti Mission. Now this name is very significant because remember, this ultimate place of liberation after hundreds, maybe thousands and millions of years of births and rebirths and suffering and so on, that maybe you could finally come to this place of liberation, but it was virtually impossible for a woman to ever achieve it. She named this mission she founded Mukti Mission because she had found that place of liberation in Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> all these births and rebirths were no longer necessary she had found that ultimate place of satisfaction and liberty in Jesus and so she, f she founded a home for orphans, girl orphans and for widows and she called it Mukti Mission expressing that sense that she had found what all of these Hindus were looking for through these countless births and rebirths. She had found it in Jesus. Amen. Now there's a, an interesting story behind her, the, the founding of Mukti Mission. While she was in England, she heard about the um, George Mueller. And I don't know if you know the name George Mueller, but George Mueller founded a number of orphanages in England in the 1800s and he had a, a twofold desire as he stated it and, and I'm telling you this because she des derived inspiration for Mukti Mission in one particular era from, from uh, George Mueller and George Mueller had two things that he wanted to accomplish. He wanted to help, he had a desire to help poor orphan children. The other thing he had a desire to do was to give a living demonstration that God could provide. And so George Mueller never let his needs be known. He never put out a statement. Now, he did give a financial report every year, and he had a board of directors of businessmen, but he made it a point not to state when he had a need. And if you read his autobiography and his stories, it has some great, wonderful stories of how God provided in such unusual ways. 
And she was exposed to George Mueller and his work when she was in India. And she tells about when she got back to India and she was so passionate to start a home for women and girls. And she said she was, one day she was sort of talking to herself and sort of to the Lord. She was sitting alone. She said, I wonder why anyone has never started a faith mission or a faith home like George Mueller, why nobody in India has ever done this. And she felt the Holy Spirit whisper to her heart, why don't you do it? <laughs> why hasn't somebody done this? Have you ever asked that? Why doesn't somebody do this or that? Maybe the Holy Spirit is saying, why don't you do it? <laughs> so that's what she heard. Why hasn't somebody done this in India? And she felt the Holy Spirit whisper to the heart, why don't you do it? So without any funds, she stepped out and she started Mukti Mission, trusting God. This is a picture of, uh, and I don't know exactly at what point this was, but just some of the young women uh, there in Mukti Mission uh, that she founded. These are some of the workers, and as you can see, there were people from Western countries who came to help her out in Mukti Mission. God gave her great favor. But Mukti Mission quickly grew to 1,500 residents and employees and included a grade school, a high school for girls, a Bible institute, and a vocational school to teach trades to the women and girls so they could go out and be self-sufficient and make their own way. Tremendous ministry. During a terrible famine in 1898 that swept through her region, and people were starving everywhere, she organized a caravan of ox carts, and she and her workers toured the region rescuing thousands of starving children, child widows, orphans, and other destitute women. Their work caught the attention of the Hindu, Hindu governor who paid a surprise visit to Mukti Mission to see who are these people <laughs> that's doing all of this uh, incredible work saving our people. And so he was exposed to them and found out, hey, these are, these, these are followers of Jesus that's doing this. Uh, I'm looking to the right because for what is coming up, I've got to have a certain book and I see it. So I'm going to step over to my side because there is a very important quote that I need to read from in the next slide or two. In 1905, Pandita began a daily prayer meeting at Mukti Mission, and these are her words. This was their goal of the prayer meeting. Every morning they met to pray. The purpose was to pray for the true conversion of all Indian Christians, including ourselves, and for a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit on all Christians of every land. Uh, and that is interesting, and I'm sure yeah. out of her own experience that she realized that there were many people who were Christians in name only. Yeah. And so the purpose of the prayer meeting each morning was to pray for the true conversion of all Indian Christians, including ourselves, and for a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit on all Christians of every land. That, of course, is a picture, a modern picture of a revival in India. But uh, it's appropriate for this next uh, slide. On June 30th, 1905, while Pandita was teaching a girl's class from John chapter 8, the Holy Spirit suddenly fell upon them, as in the book of Acts, and they all suddenly began to weep and to cry out to God. Classes and all activities were suspended because there was such conviction and a desire to pray and worship God. By the way, that's a picture of Sue and I were in India uh, preaching to a, a crowd up in uh, northeast India among the Garo people. That's from 2006. The first manifestations in the revival there at Mukti Mission were repentance, weeping, and confession of sins. But afterwards there came great rejoicing 
dancing and the desire to go out and tell others about Jesus. Pandita wrote, Some of our girls who have come under the power of the Holy Spirit have received a definite call to preach the gospel. And then she tells about where they had gone to, they had gone out. I think this is amazing, and maybe it shows the softness of our Western culture. These are orphan kids, no telling what their coming into the world in their first year or two had been like, and Pandita had rescued them, and they had grown up there. But what they're experiencing is not, oh, I need so much healing. <laughs> oh, all that I've been through. <laughs> Man, they were going to go out. <laughs> they wanted to go out and tell people about Jesus. They had found that mukti. They had found that liberation in Jesus. And they were wanting to go out and tell everybody. So out of mukti mission, these young girls began to spread out, going out preaching the gospel. Amen. Now that is a sign of real revival. <laughs> Say that again. That is a sign of real revival. Hallelujah. I want to read that again. She said, some of our girls who have come under the power of the Holy Spirit have received a definite call to preach the gospel. Now, the next one I'm going to read, I, I turned over to this book. Now, this is an old copy of my book, 2,000 Years of Charismatic Christianity. This is the first one. Now, there's a whole new version out. You, most of you are familiar with it, but I've I meant to bring the new version and read from it, but if you're interested in this quote I'm reading from, I don't even know where I got the quote because I wrote this a number of years ago, but if you, look, if you want to get a copy of 2,000 Years of Charismatic Christianity, it has a little section there on this revival that I wrote years ago. The gift of speaking in tongues was given, and visiting American missionaries were amazed to hear young, illiterate Indian girls praying and praising God in English as in the book of Acts. And here is a quote. This was a, uh, a missionary, a, an American missionary by the name of Albert Norton, who was in India at that time. He heard about what was going on at Mukti Mission, and so he made a, a point to travel to Mukti Mission and to, to visit and see what was happening. And here's what he wrote. One week ago, I visited the Mukti Mission. Miss Abrams asked me, Miss Abrams was a, an associate of Pandita, one of her co-workers there. Miss Abrams asked me if I should like to go into a room where about 20 girls were praying. After entering, I knelt with closed eyes by a table on one side. Presently, I heard someone praying near me very distinctively in English. Among the petitions were, O oh Lord, open the mouth. O oh Lord, open the mouth. O oh Lord, open the heart. O oh Lord, open the heart. O oh Lord, open the eyes. O oh Lord, open the eyes. Oh, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Oh, give complete victory. Oh, such a blessing. Oh, such glory. This is what he heard. And then he said, I was struck with astonishment as I knew that there was no one in the room who could speak English besides Miss Abrams. I opened my eyes and when within three feet of me on her knees with closed eyes and raised hands was a woman whom I had baptized at Kedagan in 1899 and whom my wife and I had known intimately since as a devoted Christian worker. Her mother tongue was Marathi and she could speak a little Hindustani, but she was unable to speak or understand English. But when I heard her speak English idiomatically, distinctly, and fluently, I was impressed as if I should have seen one whom I had known to be dead raised to life. He was profoundly impressed, impacted by what he saw. He says, a few other illiterate Marathi women and girls were speaking in English, and some were speaking in other languages. This was not gibberish, but it closely resembled the speaking of foreign language to which I had listened, but did not understand. And I'll go ahead and read what else he said. 
As Norton witnessed others being baptized in the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, he was amazed to hear so many speaking in English rather than one of the many languages of India. And so he, wondered, he asked himself and God, why are so many of these people speaking in English? By the way, the, the picture I showed where we were speaking in India, our friends there who are natives of that part of India told us that uh, they have a missionary vision and they, they target unreached people groups in India and Asia and they go there with the gospel. That more than once they have heard illiterate in Indians and in villages when the Holy Spirit comes upon them speaking in English, praising God in English. But as Norton went, witnessed others being baptized in the Spirit, he questioned, why are so many speaking in English? And this is what he said. I have an idea that is, it is in mercy to us poor missionaries from Europe and America. In other words, he's being humbled now. <laughs> he came there as the great missionary you're going to bring. <laughs> He said, I think this is happening in mercy to us poor missionaries from Europe and America who as a class seem to be doubting Thomases in regards to gifts and workings of the, of the Spirit and not receiving the power of the Holy Spirit as we ought. Well, wow. Oh, may we receive the Holy Spirit Amen. and all his fullness as we ought. This revival spread across India and throughout the world. By the way, this happened nine months before the Azusa Street Revival in Los Angeles. I'll say that again. This happened nine months before the Azusa Street Revival in Los Angeles. This revival spread across India. So Pandita is also, this is a, a designation I would give her. She's the mother of the Pentecostal revival of India. But this revival that she helped birth and that has spread across the world now numbers over 700 million around the world and is the fastest growing group in Christendom. Wow. In 1907 she wrote, this is two years into the revival, she wrote, I must praise Praise and praise the Lord for all his goodness to me and mine. He continues to bless his children at Mukti, lifting up the fallen, warming up the cold and lukewarm, healing our backslidings and loving us freely according to his promises. Being a brilliant linguist, Pandita somehow found time in all of her other busyness she found time to translate the Hebrew Old Testament and the Greek New Testament into her mother tongue of Marathi. By 1920, Pandita's health was beginning to wane and she designated her daughter Menorama to be her successor to lead Mukti Mission. That's a, a picture of her and her daughter later in her life. However, Tragically, uh, her daughter died shortly thereafter in 1921, and this was a great shock to Pandita. She then died nine months later on April 5th, 1922, a few weeks before her 64th birthday. Pandita lived a very full, and we have only touched on, we just touched on the highlights of her life, but she lived a very full and fulfilling life. She is a great role model for men and women today who want their lives to count for time and eternity. In commemoration of the 100-year anniversary of the Mukti Mission, by the way, her example was so powerful. Mukti Mission is still in operation today and many others have been started actually in other parts of the world. But in commemoration of the 100-year anniversary of the Mukti Mission, the Indian government issued a stamp in her honor in 1989. So, th so this, is, this is a powerful thing that the government of India, which is primarily Hindu, would issue a stamp in honor of this woman who had converted from Hinduism to follow Jesus. 
But you know, what did we say starting out? We were reminded of what God said of the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. He said they limited God. And t they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. I think, I think Pandita must have taken the limits off. <laughs> God is God. Hey, take the limits off of your life today. I don't know who's watching this or who will watch the archives, but God would have you to take the limits off of your life. We serve an unlimited God. Amen. And a life following Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit is a life without limitations. Hallelujah. The well-known Indian author, Vishal Mangawadi, called Pandita a builder of modern India and the Indian woman of the millennium because she, had, she was such a powerful voice lifting up the downtrodden, lifting up the down under, a voice for women, and a voice for men too who were down under and trodden down. Hey, so glad you made it. Come on in. This is Esther and this is Grace. Esther and Grace, so glad that you came. And this is Judith's mother and sister, right? Great. Well, we're so glad you all came today. Yeah, wherever, wherever's convenient, wherever's comfortable. Yep. Yeah, you can sit wherever's comfortable for you, Grace. Hi, Grace. I'm Sue. There are a couple of chairs there. Feel free. I think I'll, the, I'll go up here. Great. Okay. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you a builder of modern India because she helped change the whole structural, social structure of India by her writings and her voice. But most of all, she was a powerful voice for Jesus and for the power of true Christianity. And she never compromised her faith on any level. And so he called her a builder of modern India and the Indian woman of the millennium. And perhaps the Lord is saying today, where are my panditas? Hmm. Where are the men and women today that are willing to leave everything to follow me? Because she, 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 like Paul, she left everything, her culture, her life, everything, to follow Jesus. And look what God did. Are you willing to leave everything and follow Jesus and let him use you for his plan and purpose? I believe God is calling people today, right now, through this stream and through this video that others will watch. Amen. God wants you today to realize there's no limits to your life if you put your life in His hands. Where are my panditas? That, that was a, a message God gave to Sue many years ago. Uh, gave her another name. That's why I pulled it out here. Where are my Susannas? Where are my panditas? Where are the people who are willing to leave everything Amen. to follow me? And God says, I'll take the limits off you. I'll take you places you could never go on your own. Yeah. I'll do things you could never, through you, you could never do on your own. And God says he will do great and mighty things in your life and in your midst. And Sue, I know you have some things stirring in your heart, so why don't you uh, uh, come on out and uh, take this microphone or the one there, whatever. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. I just wanted you to read to them. Where'd it go? Kitbok was there a minute ago. What happened? There's a, our friend. Kitbok. Our friend Kitbok from India, close friend. Uh, We've ministered there with him. He's been here with us. 
So uh, he, he, he's on with us, and so he just sent a message. So as soon as you find it, Sue, bring it around. He's a missionary to Southeast India. You, you need to speak this because I don't have... Yeah, to... our friend uh, Kit Buck, he is a, he, he's from Northeast India, but he's a missionary to the world. And he's sitting right now in the airport in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam watching this stream. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. So let's pray for Kit Buck yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, Father, Lord. we thank you for Kit Buck. Yes, hallelujah. God, we ask you... You know what his needs might be yes. sitting there in Ho Chi Minh City. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for empowering him afresh today with your Holy Spirit. Father, thank you for Kit Buck. Thank you for his dedication to you. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that mighty moves of the Holy Spirit will break forth through Kit Buck in Vietnam, in Ho Chi Minh City, and wherever you're sending him today. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' praise name, God. Hallelujah. we give you all Amen. of the praise for it, Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I want to pray that God right now will heal people of anything that's holding you back from giving it all to Jesus. Maybe... Maybe it's a difficulty you went through, something you didn't understand. Maybe there's pain in your life from something you have gone through in life. But I just want to pray for healing from anything that would hold you back from giving it all to Jesus today so that he can use you for his glory. Father, we pray for your healing power flowing into people's lives right now as they look up to you. <laughs> God, bring, re removing ev every obstacle, removing every pain, healing every pain, and giving them the grace that they need, Lord, to rise up today, to stand on their feet now, and as Isaiah said, Lord, here I am, send me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here I am, Lord, send me. Thank you for doing it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. I think it is very significant that we get, in the middle of this, we get an email or a, I guess it was a Facebook thing from a, 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 an Indian person, missionary, who's in the airport in Ho Chi Minh City because God showed us that this is to have a worldwide impact from right here. That this is to have a worldwide impact and God said to me nine or ten years ago when he told me to get involved with Sue, identified with Sue in this vision, I heard the Holy Spirit as clear as I've ever heard him say, this message has the power to begin a mass movement from Islam to Christianity beginning with the women. So thank you for that, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Now, I'm just going to pause here. If anybody's sitting here, you have anything you want to express, you may want to say it, you may want to speak forth a prayer, or maybe you feel like God's dropped something in your heart. There's a microphone right up there on that stand. And if you just step up there and just speak what's in your heart, and we'll just let the Holy Spirit flow here. We'll pray, we'll talk, we'll discuss, whatever. We'll just take some time here. And, uh, and those out there who are online, feel free to send in any messages that you have. Uh, some Steve maybe Arbo. Are on live stream, some are working Steve Arbo, Arbo in, uh, in New Hampshire says, Amen, no limits. Amen, Steve uh, and Barbara. Susan Schultz is on. I believe they're in Las Vegas right now. D. Blackerby, Delilah and Charles. In Paris, Texas. Teresa Lusk. Yeah. Um, but I just... Uh, <sighs> I don't, I'm not monitoring, I'm not monitoring the audio right now, so okay. I don't know, 
to what extent this is working. Kalama koshi ta ta mo hosi isa ha ta ta kopo hosi ta ta mahasi yamahasi yamahasi anamahasa yamahasi yamahasa o ki ta ta mo hosi karabata ye kabasor yasi karabata tamoshi yamasi talama hota. I know that has interpretation. As, oh, hallelujah. Anybody else come up? Feel free to come up to the mic. Yeah. I feel the Lord is saying that the secret to Pandita Ramadhi's life was that she put her life completely in my hands. And she gave me the freedom to work freely in her life. And the Lord says today, if you will bring your life to me and put your life completely in my hands, and allow me to have free reign in your life. I will take the limits off in your life, says the Lord. And I will do things beyond what you could ever imagine, ask, or dream. For I am the limitless God. And if you will put your life in my hands and give me free reign in your life, I will work in limitless ways in and through you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to work with this mic right now. Kit Buck has been listening, and he said, Thank you for prayers, Eddie. There's so much we do not know about Pandita. We will keep researching, but she is an early follower in the faith, probably superseded by my, great gr my great-grandmother who followed him, Jesus as early as 1864-65. These are pioneers who gave everything in their day to follow Jesus. And, and, and here's something, and this is something we have talked about, Sue, so this is not, this is not just off the cuff. But at some point, we would like, uh, Kit Buck, when you come here, we would like for you to present your grandmother and induct her into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> And, uh, and when we were in India, I remember there, they, he has a big painting of her. She was the first one in that whole area of India to become a Christian. And she was expelled from her community. She suffered greatly uh, for her faith and was expelled uh, even from the village in which she lived. But yet, because she stood strong in her faith, her grandchildren, uh, uh, a, a large number of her grandchildren are, are gospel ministers who've taken the gospel all over the world because this one young woman back in the 1860s would not compromise her faith in Jesus even though it, it cost her great pain. So Kit Buck, when you come, be thinking about that when you come back to Texas to visit again. Now, I just want to open it up. Anybody here got anything you want to say? Uh, got a prayer you want to speak? or uh, You got something there, Bill? I'm not sure. Um, as I was praying, as we were praying, I just was uh, reading through Isaiah, but I'm not sure the context of it, where it was uh, speaking here about, Rise up, ye women that are at ease. <laughs> Hear my voice. <laughs> ye careless yeah, daughter, I think give that's ear it. into my speech. I think amen. that's it. I think that's okay, it. That was in I think I think that's right on. That's appropriate. Yeah, I think that's also. It Let me read that. Can you hear her? Just just try to be sensitive. Yeah. To what I'm saying. Yeah. I can turn your mic up. Okay. So that we can hear her clearly. So oh, good. Bell read it again, Bell. I want women to find your voice. Okay, Bell, you're on. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 32. Verse 9, Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Amen. That's it. That's, that's, Hallelujah. That's the word of the Lord. Yes. That's the word of the Praise Lord. God, I don't wake you up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That's the word of the Lord, Bill. No question that's about amazing. it. That's amazing. I think I want to mention something. Um, and it's that culture, we have to be really, really casting off what culture puts on us. And of course, Pandita did that. Um, I don't know, tradition, I'm thinking more of culture. In America, 
when people say, well, you're too old to do that, yeah. <laughs> or you don't have the education, or, um, oh, your husband won't let you do that. You know, it's this culture that limits. Yeah. And I think this is the thing we have to break free of, and that's what she did. She broke free of the culture to be able to just totally and, and, and impacted follow. the culture for good that's right follow jesus yeah it's just the culture is what puts you put you down and you have to rip that off and go forward and only then can you change the culture for that's, good that's yeah. right yeah. thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth yeah. as it is in heaven yeah. i like to think of that as thy the culture of heaven come invade the, yeah. the fallen culture of this world I love that. Is, is that on? <laughs> yeah, she's on. Oh, she I, is. Okay. Yes. Yes. Anybody else? And that's what revival is. Yeah. Yes. Now, feel free. Anybody's got something in your heart, it's okay. Um, while we're waiting, I'll just mention this. Maybe we could pray the prayer that they prayed at Mukti Mission that ignited Amen. the great revival, Amen. prayed for the conversion of all the Christians of India. She said, including ourselves. Like and for a, a, a mighty outpouring on all Christians everywhere. So they weren't just, it wasn't just kind of a self-centered bless me thing. They really, they, they really were serious in that business. And I think also that she said ourselves yeah. shows her heart, shows right. the humility. Yeah. It wasn't, I'm something special. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. True. Well, Lord, we uh, show us where we areas where we need to be converted. And I'm reminded, as I even say that, that where Jesus said one time, "Except you be converted and become as little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of God." So, Lord, show us any area of our hearts Thank you, Lord. where we need to be converted more into Your likeness. Thank you. And Lord, we pray for the conversion of Christians in America, yes. Canada, Ireland, England. Father, maybe where so many have slipped into the Christian religion, a, an, an outward form. Yes, sir. Lord, as the scripture that Baal read, may we rise up yes, out of ease. Mm -hmm. May we rise up, O oh God, <laughs> and be the powerful witnesses that you would have us to be for you. Thank you for it, Lord. Jesus. Thank you for pouring out your Holy Spirit on, on us, Lord. And on everyone who views this, this stream. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Is it too late to say something? Pardon? Is it too late to say something? No, no, step up to the mic there, uh, Yolanda. This is Yolanda. It, it'll pick you up like that. It will pick you up just standing naturally. It, this is going to be in Spanish, but basically I'm telling the women who speak Spanish, it's an encouragement to them, yes. it's an encouragement to them about yes. how the marvelous plans of the Lord for them. Yes. Yes. Uh, para las mujeres de habla hispana, que comprendan el gran amor de Dios para ustedes y que los planes de Él son maravillosos en el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Amen. 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 Yeah, just speak whatever's in your heart, uh, Judith. This is Judith, originally from Uganda, now lives in Tulsa. Uh, you say the culture limits us. Yes. Uh, and uh, I accept that. But also we limit ourselves because of the, the women have gone through so much, most of the women, that we look at what we've gone through and we allow it to... The Bible says everything works together for good. And God will use the pain that we've gone through for his own good because he's God. And there's nothing impossible with him. That's right. But so most of the women we've allow we've given the enemy the the opportunity to use our pain to crush us and our families mm. instead of surrendering our pain into the hands of God Amen. and letting him use it yes. Pandida would have said oh I've lost my parents I've lost my child 
I've lost my husband, why don't I give up? But actually, we've, we've seen that she, she went beyond that yes. and helped thousands and millions and brought revival. So I pray for every woman Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus that they will let God use their pain and their traumas, their tragedies to bring revival, Amen. To, to take off the limits. Yes. We refuse to give our pain, our bad experiences into the hands of the enemy. But Holy Spirit, you are a God that heals us. You heal every woman right now. You heal every bad experience right now. Lord, you take over. We surrender. Oh God, like Pandita did, give our lives into the hands of the Holy Spirit that a God that uses all things for good will use even the yes, bad, even the, our weaknesses, our fears, our anxieties to build the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Yes, Pandita's parents died of starvation, but she went out and, and <laughs> fed the children of India. Let's, let's use what the enemy has used to put us down, to actually turn it around and use it to change the world in the name of Jesus. His peace and Lord, thank you for every African woman. But also thank you for every woman in America. Thank you for every girl. Thank you for those that are scared. Thank you for, for those that feel they are weak because you say when we are weak, then we are strong. Amen. Let the weak say that I am strong. So I thank you for every weak woman right now. <laughs> because then we, I thank you for every fearful woman right now. <laughs> every depressed, every, any luck. Lord, that you're going to use that. She started with no money. And I thank you because, Lord, we, are, we as the women, we are going to do things with no money. Yes. We are going to change the world with no money. We are going to change our families with no money. <laughs> we are going to, but Lord, we are going to, to with the Holy Spirit helping us. Yes. Lord, we are going to call, we call in every depressed woman in the name of Jesus. We call in every depressed family member, our children, our husbands, the world, everyone who is lost in religion, in confusion, in darkness. We put a stop yes. to the works of the enemy. Yes. In the name of Jesus. And thank you because you're raising an army of women and yes. girls and men, Lord. For Christ's sake, Lord, it's not about anything but the Holy Spirit. We give you the permission to take off the limits in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I speak light to the women? Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus, for your life. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. I speak light. I speak strength to all women. I speak courage. I release the power of the Holy Spirit yes, yes. to empower us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father, because our lives, we didn't choose you, but you chose us. Amen. Yes. Thank you, mighty Father. Let every daughter of the King, the allies, their identity in you. Yes, may we see you, may we see ourselves the way you see us. In the name of Jesus, yes, yes, may we see ourselves as daughters of the King. May we see ourselves as chosen, as a loyal priesthood, as set apart for you, yes. that we will reflect your glory to our worlds. In the name of yes, Jesus, yes, thank you, Father, because you chose us, that we might reflect your glory, reflect your beauty, reflect your power, reflect your grace, Reflect your goodness, Almighty God. We glorify your holy name and we speak all this in the name of Jesus Christ. I've prayed. Amen. 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 Amen.
to go. Ah, well, anybody else? The mic is open. Praise the Lord. Amen. I would love to hear you speak also in Uganda. That's what I Oh, would. I would speak. Please, please no. just because there might be people in Uganda who will watch yeah. this. Oh, I can't. Yeah, yeah. 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 This, this will be archived. People will watch it all over the world. Yes. Okay. 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 Um, come and see me. Uh, to the Hanu, ya muri Texas, si America. Chonka to the Hanu, ya kugaluzamu. Um, umana wa umana wa rohanga we na hari. To the to enangu to change it to the muri Christo Yesu. Amen. Aba umkazi o kaz o kanabi sibwane shaga maya Yesu ye change it rohanga ya kuindwe. Oye mele mo bumanzi, azo kore bjo bumanzi, mizina dga yesu, ora o o o oye o ora oye gamira mani gomo yori kuera. So turasi malhanga, o galuke mama ni eshara itunyo kujirangu, mwe na mwe na humuri, buri mukazi wa ruhanga we na hari, amani chiri ruhanga ya mhindwire, kandi aye mele mo mani. Gomo yori kwe akore biobu manzi Mungizi na adga yesu Amen I'll speak in Kinyaranda Ma tulashaka Kufuga na naburi mudamu Naburi mukobga wese Urikui singo Imana ifitu mugambi Yatumye Iko heleza kuri yisi Kujirango Nujiru bgoba, nujiki neje, nuhuwe mele ngu mganzi, akubeche, changwa kufujire mo. Hariko, uwe mele ko umuka wera, ashobora kugukoresha. Kandi, aga ashobora kugutsi ndira, uri wibazo bjo, suri gucha mo. Aga ashobora kuguha imbaraga, ucheneye, kujirango utenye uhagarare ubu mugore ushobora gusengera abana bawe ushobora kubasubiza mu imbaraga kandi ugakora ibikomeye kuri yisi mu izina rya Yesu all right. I am just so blessed here. I hardly know what to do with myself. Is there anything else? Stirring. You go ahead, Eddie. I don't want to take over. Well, no, no. This is good. This, well, this, this, this is, this is incredible. No telling what, how God's going to use this time together today, because it's going to be archived and Amen. out there on the in cyberspace, and no telling who is going to listen to this, and who's going to listen in Rwanda and uh, Uganda, and who knows where, and Mexico and Spain and Amen. South America. Who knows? Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> That, that, that's the magic of the U.S. Mm -hmm. God called, God yeah. called, people called. Oh, yes. That's the, that's the, what should I call the calling of America, yes. because people come from everywhere, everywhere. and you, we, we, you carry the gospel to, right. to yes. all the other all different the places Amen. of the world. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So Amen. that is. I've been to Africa twice and preached over there. That's good. That's yeah. Oh, and God, it, and God brought us here for a purpose. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah so we, our purpose is to lift up Jesus and the whole world to see, because if He's lifted up. Yes. He, he will draw men unto himself. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Amen. 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 That's and wonderful. And that's what he's doing now. That's he's what doing he's doing now. now. Well, this has been such an incredible, wonderful time together. And I'm so blessed for the folks right here that came together today. And for all of you who are online, thank you for being with us today. And uh, as Sue said, this is such a blessed time. In one sense, you could go on and on, but... Uh, we're not going to prolong it. We'll go as long as the Holy Spirit wants to. But I think, I, as far as I know, we can bring this to a close right now. And we're going to have some free refreshments and eating. Do you want to leave it on for that, Sue? Okay. You know, one thing that we learned very early on, uh, we were streaming in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we had a table something like this, and uh, there were people sitting around. And uh, when we finished, we were having some refreshments, and we were just talking, and Sue turn the stream off and we started getting emails turn the stream back on we want to hear what you're talking about <laughs> so we'll just leave it on <laughs> for people who want to to join in but let's just have a prayer together and let's just thank god for what he has done 
And Pandita now is officially inducted into the uh, International Christian Women's Hall of Fame, and she will have a special display out front when all of this is finished. This is a work in process, and uh, we're believing that God's going to send people along to give Sue the help that she needs to get this thing up and running where we will have daily hours open and people can come in and see people like Pandita and, uh, and what they have done. And, and we believe this is going to be a soul winning center uh, right here. So, so thank you all. Let's pray together. Father, thank you. Thank you for Pandita Ramabe and her life. We derive, Lord, great encouragement and inspiration, Lord, from her life. Thank you for it, Lord. And we thank you that you're still the same today, yesterday, and forever. Thank you, Lord. And I want to leave people with that word that you got, Bell. If you will allow me, I'm going to read that. And I think this was something God said very clearly. I received something through your tongues, but you received this also at the same time. And this was just so powerful and appropriate. Rise up, you women that are at ease. Hear my voice, you careless daughters. Give ear to my speech. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus, for all that you're doing. Thank you for a mighty revival and outpouring of the Holy Spirit throughout the world. Lord, we thank you for a mighty revival among the women of Islam in Iran, in Saudi Arabia, throughout the Middle East, in Pakistan, India, other parts of the world. Thank you, Lord, for this mighty mass movement that you spoke to me about years ago, a mighty mass movement from Islam to Christianity, beginning with the women. God, and we thank you for pouring out your spirit throughout the world. Hallelujah. Because you said in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Thank you, Lord, that you're doing it. And thank you so much for allowing us to have a small part in your great plan for this planet and for the universe. Thank you for it, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.